This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 1013, Saving for College, What is a 529 Plan? Part 2, by Kamiko of TheBudgetMom.com. Hello, everybody, and happy Friday. I am your host here on ORD, Greg Audino, and I'm excited to wrap up part two of yesterday's episode, courtesy of Kamiko from The Budget Mom. As I said, this is part two, so be sure to check out yesterday's episode if you haven't already. But if you're up to speed and are ready to learn more about this plan that yields many benefits to your children, as well as yourself, listen on as we continue optimizing your life. Saving for College What is a 529 Plan? Part 2 by Kamiko of TheBudgetMom.com What are the tax benefits to a 529 plan? First, contributions to your 529 plan or plans are not deductible from your federal income taxes. Still, more than half the U.S. states offer state income tax incentives or tax credits for 529 contributions. To get these deductions, you may be required to invest in your legal home state's 529 plan. Second, and more encouraging, Funds that grow from a 529 plan are free from federal tax and will not be taxed even when the money is withdrawn for qualifying educational expenses. We will cover these specifics later. How much can I contribute to a 529 plan? For tax purposes, the IRS doesn't specify a yearly contribution limit for 529 plans, since they are considered gifts. And while most of us don't have to worry about hitting a maximum amount, there are still some rules to keep in mind. For 2019, to qualify for the yearly tax exemption, contributions may total up to $15,000 per plan, per individual contributing to the plan. So, while only one person can own the account, and each account can only have one beneficiary, multiple people can contribute the maximum to an account and still get the exemption. As far as a minimum is concerned, Each plan has a different initial startup amount, often as little as $25. But after the 529 plan is in place, any further contributions are optional. You can start it and forget it, set up monthly withdrawals from your bank account, or make occasional lump sum contributions after holidays or tax returns. The point is, you decide when and how much. You can withdraw the money in a 529 plan for any reason. However, If it isn't used for qualifying educational expenses, it is subject to taxes and penalties. The IRS does allow tax-free withdrawals of up to $10,000 per year for qualifying educational expenses. Either way, you will need to report withdrawals on your annual tax returns. How can a 529 plan be used? A 529 plan can be used for accredited colleges and universities and other eligible post-secondary educational institutions, like trade schools and graduate schools. Qualifying educational expenses include tuition, lab fees and equipment, books and supplies, computers and internet fees, room and board or rent. For on-campus residents, room and board expenses are included, but cannot exceed what the college charges. For off-campus students, Rent is considered a qualifying expense if the student is enrolled at least half-time, but is limited to the cost figures provided by the college. Financial aid offices will provide you with this information. K-12 through tuition. As of 2018, 529 plans can also be used for private elementary and high school. The difference is, for K-12, through parents can withdraw up to $10,000 per student per year for tuition alone. Non-qualifying expenses include things like health insurance, transportation costs, and surprisingly, student loan payments. Withdrawals for these purposes will result in a 10% penalty and will also be subject to income taxes. What happens to the 529 plan if my child doesn't need it? What happens if the beneficiary of a 529 plan chooses not to attend school, or doesn't need the plan due to being awarded a full scholarship or being selected to attend a U.S. military academy. If these situations occur, you have multiple options for your 529 plan without incurring taxes or penalties. The account remains intact to be used by the named beneficiary at a later date. 
The funds remain in the plan for graduate school. The beneficiary can be changed to another family member. You can make yourself the beneficiary and go back to school. And the money can be rolled into a 529 ABLE account, an account for people living with disabilities. What states offer 529 plans? As of 2018, all 50 U.S. states and the District of Columbia offer 529 college savings plans, and over half of those have tax incentives. 11 states continue to offer 529 prepaid tuition plans. U.S. News has a breakdown of each state's regulations and policies that are worth checking out. Also, NerdWallet lists a state-by-state breakdown to include the names of each 529 plan, what the tax benefits are, and what the minimum contribution requirement is. The 529 plan was created by Congress and named after Section 529 of the Internal Revenue Code. Its legal name is the Qualified Tuition Program, and the IRS has a thorough Q&A page that covers any further questions and concerns you have. Remember that saving always costs less than borrowing. A little now can go a long way later, both financially and motivationally. Just knowing you have invested in their future can make all the difference for your children. And with multiple 529 plan options, you are sure to find one that meets your budget, your risk comfort, and your financial goals. You just listened to part two of the post titled, Saving for College, What is a 529 Plan? by Kamiko of TheBudgetMom.com And everybody, we come to the OLD community to work on ourselves, right? We all want to do this, especially long term. But therapy can be expensive. Well, there is a new way to grow that we are really excited to be partnering with, and that's TATLAB. TATLAB, or the Angry Therapist Lab, has live Zoom group classes led by a team of therapists and coaches on everything from relationship building tools to conquering codependency, trauma work to breath work, even astrology readings. There's also a social hour in which everyone can talk freely and build new friendships. You see, this is not therapy. It's part lecture and part group engagement, a fun way to work on your emotional well-being from home and meet like-minded people while doing so. So go to tatlab.app and use discount code ORD at checkout to get unlimited live classes, plus hundreds of hours of audio lessons and courses on a variety of wellness topics for only 20 bucks, the price of a gym class drop-in fee. For a limited time only, again, go to www.tatlab.app, and the discount code is ORD, all letters in lowercase. This is the new way to grow. We'll see you in the lab. And thanks so much to Kamiko for this wonderful post. I definitely do not offer financial advice with the same wisdom that Diana does over at Optimal Finance Daily, but the longer this post went on, the more it seemed like a 529 plan is a good idea, even for those who aren't necessarily preoccupied with putting children through college right now. This is a really diverse and versatile investment that has a lot of opportunity should your children not go to college when planned, like Kamiko mentioned. The multiple rollover opportunities she mentioned towards the end there give it a lot of life should this be the case, not to mention the fact that it can now be used on private schooling pre-college, which is rising in both popularity and certainly in expenses. And if I'm understanding correctly, don't forget that this can serve as any other investment account too. Surely there will be penalties in non-education withdrawals, but especially if these withdrawals are taken out later or once the investment has earned a lot of money, you're likely still turning a profit, not to mention building a great saving habit for yourself, as well as modeling one for your children. Again, definitely look to a financial advisor before taking my word for it, uh, or if you still have questions after this article or are on the fence. But it seems to be a path that provides financial advantages for you and your children, as well as motivational advantages for you and your children. And what's not to like about that? Thanks a lot for joining for these last couple of episodes, guys, and hearing this post out in full. Time to wrap up, though, as we look towards the weekend. Hope you have a great night tonight, and do be sure to come on back tomorrow for another Q&A segment, everybody, where your optimal life awaits.